Okay, good evening and welcome to tonight's candidate forum for the school board. Um, my name is Giovanna and I will be facilitating. Can you guys hear me? Okay, so we're just going to run it. Um, they're each going to get 15 minutes. Um, they can spend three minutes on introductions. You can use the full time or not. And then the rest of the 12 minutes will be questions from the audience. Okay, and we will draw who gets to go first. Yes. We're all bunched up. Okay. Casey, you're up first. Okay. So it's not like a round robin. We're just shooting, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's going to be, yeah, like 15 minutes. Um, just have, kind of like we did at Skyline. Um, just have the audience ask questions or. Am I coming through okay? All right. So, uh, so fourth round of this for us. So I'm not going to get too deep into introducing myself. I'm Casey Weiss. Um, I'm from the area. My family's been in the area for the five generations once my kids get through the school here this time. So uh, I'm an engineer by trade. I graduated from Black River Falls High School. I went on to the University of Wisconsin South to get a manufacturing engineering degree. From there, I've spent over 20 years in the food industry doing various positions. Um, you know, I've managed maintenance departments as small as, you know, eight mechanics all the way up to a job that I had with Hormel before coming back to Black River Falls uh, with 22 supervisors and 160 mechanics. So I've been around uh, when it comes to facilities. I know what it takes to upkeep facilities and to upkeep uh, wet environments. Um, in the food industry, you've got a lot of different things you got to take care of with that. Um, so I think that things that I can bring to the board, you know, ability to manage a budget, ability to, you know, reinvest in our facilities and determine the type of things that need to be put into them in order to, you know, continue to have great facilities. Because I do truly believe that this community has done an excellent job of providing spaces for our kids to come to and to learn. Um, and I want to make sure that those are going to be there for many, many years. So um, I guess let's have some questions. Does anybody have any questions out there? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Casey, you just talked about investing in our, our buildings and our structures, and we do have wetlands, you know, down by the high school and all that. How would you invest in our students, since we have such a majority of them that aren't doing too good? Invest in the students. Well, I think the biggest thing about the students is making sure that they've got a safe place that they can come to and that they can learn. Um, they can be themselves, you know, so I think one of the things that we need to put some emphasis on is to reduce the amount of bullying that happens inside of our schools. Um, I think you got to make tough decisions when you have uh, consistent troublemakers that are part of the schools. Um, you know, those students need to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis and make sure that everybody else has an environment where they can come to, they can be open-minded, and they can learn. So I know that the school board is part of a lot of those decisions. Uh, I think what's important is to take a look at a lot of the policies and things that have been written by the past school boards and to see how open and inclusive that those are for the learning environment for the kids. Um, you know, and then determine if what we're doing is the right thing and not be afraid to, to make a hard decision if you do need to make a change on whatever it might happen to be. But I think each one of those things will come up, you know, as the year goes along within the school board. You know, I'm not going to come into this thing guns are blazing like I'm going to save the world because, I, you know, it's, it's a group of people. It's a cumulative effort in order to get through something like that. And you've got to you got to work through what's happened in the past and you got to make decisions that you feel are going to be the best for the learning environment in the future. So I think that's the key, just being open-minded and not being afraid to make a tough decision. What's your definition of a safe place? My definition of a safe place is that if, if my child leaves their home in the morning and they're happy and they're smiling and they go to school and they come home in the same way, then I would feel like that place is pretty darn safe. So. Anybody else have a question? It's going to be a short 15 minutes. Got any from 
pre plan questions? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, there was three submitted questions. Um, one of them is, would you consider giving students the option of taking a full year of sports for fall, winter, spring for a gym credit? So like if the students were full athletes across the entire year and then give them that as a gym credit? Um, I guess I'm surprised that, that, that a student that would want to take that, be in that many sports, would want to give up taking gym because usually that's a class that you want to take because you love sports, right? when you're in gym class so uh, I, I would say I wouldn't be opposed to it I would want to see like what would be the option for them to take instead of it like what kind of learning can they do um, and if, if it's something that the faculty or, or the, a student body person would come to and propose to us definitely listen to it so. those were you questions right yeah. yes that was a government class question sure yep. <clears throat> Patty's got her hand. I just learned that you can take a hunter safety class in high school for half a credit. And we have a, the Tiger shooting sports. And I'm wondering how you feel about having a hunter safety class for half a credit in high school. Well, I think it makes a lot of sense if you have, if you have kids that are going to be participating in shooting sports. Um, I guess I'm fortunate enough that that's something that my sons are passionate about at this point in life. And I have a son that, that shoots in the fact he's, so my wife's not here tonight because she had to take him to practice. So, um, you know, a big part of carrying a firearm is obviously knowing how to do it and do it safely. You know, it's, it's a big responsibility and we hand that responsibility to people that are at a very young age a lot of times. So, so I think the fact that they are offering the class is a good thing. You know, obviously we're not going to have any firearms brought onto the school grounds, uh, but to learn, there's nothing wrong with both learning about it. So. Everybody's too busy eating. It's quite fun. Go ahead, Chad. Hello, my name is Chad Blackdeer, and my question is very simple. As a new school board member, working in conjunction with the other school board members, what would your plan be or your contribution to a greater plan to tackle and curb the truancy problem within the school district? So, personal opinion, uh, truancy comes down to a couple of things. First, uh, do the kids truly enjoy being at school and do they want to be there? Uh, because if they want to be there, they're going to put a lot of pressure on the adult figures in their life to make sure that they get there. Um, even if they're tardy, I'd rather see tardy than not at all, in my opinion. Okay? Um, I think we can work with tardy. Um, the second thing is empowering the parents and finding them an avenue to help get their kids to the school. So if there are hardships that are on certain families, uh, I think as a school board we need to we need to listen to those type of things and find out if we can find a way to help make sure that those kids still have a way to get to school. Um, you know, we have a very good bus system, you know, obviously we're a rural community, so they're traveling a lot of country roads um, in order to get the kids. Um, but I do think there might be some opportunities for us to have like certain like stop areas where if, if parents can't make it all the way into town, you know, maybe a bus is going to be at this spot that's going to sit there for a short period of time to allow for you know, I guess a, a community of kids to come together and get on the bus and not head in. So, and if we do have something like that, I apologize for not knowing any better, but you know, if we don't, it could be a good idea. Any other questions out here? Giovanna, you want to do another one? Well, there's only three from them. And we all get all of them. Yeah. Okay, so how does the board view our current class ranking system considering Evers 2023 Wisconsin Act 95? Mm. Yeah, I don't have any knowledge of that act myself, so I'm not sure I can answer it, but I guess I can talk a little bit about class rank in comparison to what I've seen in the past. So. Um, I think the fact that kids are being pushed to do more community service is a positive thing. 
Um, I don't necessarily feel that that has anything to do with like what they know cognitively towards their education. Um, and I do feel very strongly that, that the kids that have good grades um, should be rewarded for that effort and the things that they do within the school. Um, I think there is a way right now for the kids to kind of make up for that with the amount of their involvement, which I do think is important. We want to see our children being active community members. Um, but at the same time, I don't know that that really should drive what their overall um, class rank is, in my opinion. Any other questions? Just a little over five now. Okay, well, I'll just end with first off, everybody that attended tonight, uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your evening to come and sit down and listen to all of us talk for the fourth time, I guess. Uh, so, I believe we got a very strong group of candidates here this year. Um, very uh, thankful that everybody that took the time to, be, to come out and to run has done so. And I, I really think that the community can't go wrong with selecting any of the six of us. So. Um, I'll leave you with that. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. My name is Matthew Lind. Uh, I have three kids in the district. I'm a retired Marine. Uh, you guys, if you've listened to any of this before, you're going to know this already. Um, so I just want to congratulate the uh, the Ho Chunk Nation on recognizing that there was a problem, and taking steps to solve that problem. You guys have done very well hiring tutors and things like that. Mike, what I want to say to you though is there is no reason why you have to do this alone. You shouldn't have to do it alone. There's no reason why you have to fix it. We should fix it together. We have a problem, all of us, even when you separate the whole chunk of students from the rest of the students, we have a problem. That, there, that question about, about uh, whether either Evers thinks it's important to have a DPI ranking or, or whether, it's, whether that means anything, that's the only way that we have to tell whether the children that are learning what we want them to learn. If we say we want, we want this to be taught and we want the children to learn this, how else are we gonna figure out if they learned it if we don't test them? So I don't like standardized tests, it's not great, but there isn't another way to figure it out. If you can find another way besides standardized tests to find out if a student has learned what you taught them, let me know. We'll do that instead. Uh, from here, let's take questions. Yes. Hello, this is Chad Black here again. Um, from what you just said, you were very, very passionate about it. Uh, what is the problem from your vantage point as a new board member? I think the problem is that uh, we have standards that don't work and we need to scrap those standards and, and come up with different standards. And uh, we are purchasing pre-written curricula. Uh, okay, from, for one, the uh, the math curriculum that we do that we just put in that curriculum uh, was was put in at the at the behest of, of three math teachers and it wasn't looked at by the board. There wasn't enough time for the board to review it, see if it was a good curriculum, and uh, so they adopted it. And those three math teachers are either gone or on their way out. So that's the problem that we're having right now. The board has no control over what's going on. The board is not supposed to rubber stamp everything. The board is supposed to evaluate and make decisions. And that's not happening right now. Uh, Betsy Sadwell here. Um, for the last three forums, we've heard a lot about growth, how our kids are growing in the school district. Growth is good. Um, and that we're above the state average. Um, I believe Michaela and Amy said this. We're above the state average when it comes to student growth. So my question to Matt and probably for the rest of you guys is, what's the difference between standards and growth? Every year the board has to approve the standards they're going to use. So what are we, 
what's the difference between those two? We hear growth lot mentioned a lot more than we do standards. Well, it depends. Do you meet the standards or do you just accept growth, however little it may be? You have to meet the standards, right? So if you don't meet the standards, growth is great, but it's not getting us where we need to be. If you're already behind, a little bit of growth is not going to help. You need to meet the standards. And if you don't meet the standards, you need to be held accountable. The, I was told the other day at the, one of the other meetings that, uh, that we should just pass the kids even if they don't meet the standards. And I said, well, why would we do that? And she said, because then they're not likely to graduate. If we don't pass them, they're not likely to graduate? No kidding. That's, <laughs> that's what not passing means. So, no, she says, no, I mean, what if we don't pass them in freshman year, they're not going to graduate when they're seniors. Okay, so what's the purpose of our school district? we got to ask ourselves that. If the purpose of our school district is just to hand out diplomas, i got a printer. Let's go. That's not the purpose. It shouldn't be our purpose. Our purpose should be to educate. Because if they have a diploma with no education, what, what is that diploma worth? Okay, I have a question. Uh, what particular experiences or skills have prepared you to serve as a board member? Um, well, I, like I said before, uh, I, I taught in Pensacola. Uh, okay, NAS Pensacola, it's the, it's the Center for Naval Aviation. Everybody who goes does avionics or anything with, with, uh, with aircraft goes through Pensacola, Florida. I taught 2,000 students there. Um, <clears throat> and then I've been a coach on every sport I can get my hands on, and I love working with kids. I love uh, watching them progress and watching them grow and watching that light in their eyes when they get something. When they've been working on something really, really hard and then they finally get it, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world. Mary Jo Radcliffe, I've listened to the other three forums and I've heard you talk about our school district. I have not heard you say one positive thing about our school district. I want to know what you think is positive in the school district and why a person should vote for you when you're threatening to take your kids out. I think uh, everybody cares about the school district. I think that there is no lack of emotion when it comes to the school district and everybody wants to solve it. The problem is everybody's got a different idea of how to solve it. So if you think that my idea that there is actually a problem that we need to change is the, is the way to solve it, is the way to fix what's going on right now, then vote for me. If you feel like it's the, it, it, the, like there's not really a problem, means you just want to keep going kind of the way we have been, and you think that's all right, don't vote for me, vote for one of the other ones. You still didn't say one positive thing about our district. Do you have something that, positive? That was positive, that everybody cares here. Everybody in our district cares. Not, it, it's not that, it's not that we're, they're, we're completely ambivalent to, to the plight of the students. I mean, there are places where, where they don't really care what's going on. They're, they're, the students have kind of lost, are lost in the shuffle. That's not here. We care about our kids. This whole district cares about the kids. The teachers are amazing. The teachers work really hard. Every teacher I've ever been in contact with has been great. I haven't had any problems with them, which is strange because uh, we being a military family, we bounced around all over the place. And I had teachers who honestly didn't seem like they cared at all, who, th who I thought that teacher should have retired 10 years ago. We don't have that here. Every teacher seems like they work and they are dedicated and they love our children. They love working with them and they love seeing them grow. So that's what we have here is the people that are here. Not, I, 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 could, I, could, I could go with, with uh, facilities, we got wonderful facilities because we do, but you know what? There, there are kids in trailers in other districts that do just, that, that have an amazing performance that the facilities are, do not make the district. The people make the district. And this district has great people. We just need to work in the right direction. This is Chad again. Um, so listening to you speak <laughs> brings questions. Uh, so from your vantage point, you're saying that the faculty is amazing and that they work hard and they have their best intentions for all the kids that they work with but yet the school district isn't meeting standards so i'm confused at the disconnect 
from your vantage point on the school district not meeting standards, but all of the faculty being amazing to quote you? Because the standards are wrong. We need to change the standards. Our standards that we've taken on are, I don't like them. They need to be different. We need to change our grading system. We need to change our standards. We need to change our curriculum. So the faculty is amazing. The curriculum is bad. Yes. Okay. Shelley Severson here. Um, I am wondering when you use the word standard, I get, I'm a little bit confused because the state ranking on the report card matters an awful lot to you, and that is based off of the ACT and Wisconsin Forward and all those assessments. All of those assessments are based off of the standards that our board has adopted. And so I'm uncertain your plan for not teaching the standards that are aligned to those assessments and still excelling at those assessments. We can change those, we can change the forward as well. We can change all of our testing. We can change whichever ones we want. Not there is, there is one, any aid. there is one, uh, okay, that's the other thing. We should not depend on, on, on federal aid or state aid. Do you we, know how much money the district yes. receives in state aid? Y yes, and we need to look at that. We need to look okay. at that. That's a lot bigger can of worms, and I'm gonna open today. Take care. Okay, I'll ask another question. So, if elected for school board, could you support a board decision you did not vote in favor of? Why or why not? You still support it, even if you don't. Even if it was not your idea and it wasn't your, you didn't want to do it. You still have to abide it. It was the majority decision. Yes. From okay, I'll ask another one. Okay, so how would you, if elected for the board, be accessible to the community, to specific community groups? Um, I'm, I'm all over the place. I mean, you can contact me in any way you want. Uh, I, I'll talk to anybody. That's the, that, that's the one thing I don't have a problem with, is talking to anybody. If somebody has a problem, just come up and talk to me and I'll, I'll do whatever I can to do it, to take care of it. All right, we're just gonna drop for the next candidate. Thank you. I'm going to try and keep this as brief as I can. Mike, mouth closer to the mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Loud and clear. Um, my name is Michaela Conlon. Like these, these gentlemen have said, we've been here for our fourth one. So I'll try and keep it brief. Um, I am originally from the Twin Cities. I uh, came here from the University of Minnesota. I married my husband during COVID and ended up um, very, uh, to, to come here in Black River and stay here with my kiddos. Um, I am um, very community oriented and community minded, um, and that partly is part of what my education is in. Um, but I got a, a master's from the School of Social Work and uh, thought education's always been a passion, so I have a master's in ed. Um, so yeah, so I came here, I was really excited to have my daughter in a smaller school system. I was really active in the school systems back in the cities. I uh, actually, uh, if you have, are familiar with the academic process, there's kind of three pillars in, in the University of Minnesota. Uh, you do some research, you do some teaching, and you do a community project. So while I was working at the University of Minnesota, I had the privilege of also doing some research in the community project. Um, so the community, uh, the nonprofit that I was uh, helped, helped a faculty member at the U of Start, um, we kind of did it collaboratively, uh, was a program focused on parent engagement. Um, it was a pilot when I started it in like 2000, 2008, and um, since then, there's been enough research accumulated that the state of Minnesota is looking at it as, uh, uh, as a best practice. So we're really excited about that, um, but and 
in order to marry my husband, I had to leave all of my beautiful career behind me and come and start new adventures and new projects. And I've been so excited to be here. I've tried to be as involved as I can in the school district and the community in all the ways that make things magical and um, help me get to know people and help me understand kind of the community we've been placed in. Um, my daughter has had a beautiful experience here at Black River Falls and I am running for board because I just want to see that continue. I want to have her come home after school just elated and smiling um, with the beautiful things that took place throughout the day. So, uh, and she reads really well. I'm like really, really excited about that. My, son, my son's from before and she doesn't. She's reading beautifully. So um, that's been beautiful to see. Uh, and I just uh, want to be part of the conversation about what we're and what trajectory uh, we're, we're on and, and why we're there and how we continue to keep that um, positive momentum and growth going. All right, so anybody have any questions for Michaela? Uh, same question about standards and growth. The school board has to vote in the standards that they use, which every grade, at the end of the grade, the child has to meet. And that's what they vote for. And then we talk about growth. If you have a kid that is three grade levels behind and they start at fifth grade at a second grade level, they end fifth grade at a third grade level, that's 100% growth. That still means they're way behind. So. You've talked a lot about growth in the last three candidate hearings. So as a board member, you're supposed to vote for the standards and not the growth. So the question is, why have you concentrated so much on growth when we have a lot, quite a few kids that are behind? Um, because growth uh, is an indicator that well, we won't continue to have kids that are behind. Um, I know that there was a difference of opinion about 13% growth not being uh, substantial. And I, I do, my opinion does differ. I think like, let's put it in credit card. Like if my credit card's up 13% every year, by about year four, I'd be about done with that. Um, because that is actually quite a bit of growth. So um, so although we are not going to be able to make Mr. Fifth Grader uh, uh, fifth grade ready, maybe by the end of fifth grade being three, two, three years behind, um, that's not what the district or the board is measuring. We're looking at it as the sum of the whole. And so, um, although we want every single kid to have that opportunity, what we're measuring is the ability for us to prevent those kids from being behind in the first place. So, um, so yes, I think growth is hugely important. I think if you're not growing, that's a bigger issue. Um, I also think that um, I don't. I think there's a. I don't necessarily. Graduation isn't my end game. I love kids. But I also love people, and I want every student to have an opportunity when they leave the doors to go on bigger and better and more amazing opportunities. And I want them to become lifelong learners. So um, those standards are set to allow us to, to um, correct the ship so that when they leave our doors, they're going on and they're ready and capable at the next academic adventure. So um, I don't think that the standards or the growth are necessarily one or the other is better. Um, I think they serve different purposes, but my focus on growth is that I do see substantial growth happening and that if we continued on this trajectory, we would see less children with that divide. And so that's why I look at the numbers the way I do. Um, and I research it all the time. So uh, yeah, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Um, a follow up to the question is Wisconsin's a local control state when it comes to school districts. So what's your definition of that? Definition of local control? Yep. It means that we are setting, a, we're, we're in charge of setting locally within our community and our district, um, the standards that we're gonna be utilizing throughout the, for whatever time period we've decided. Okay, so do we have to use DPI standards? Uh, so DPI pro uh, provides, um, kind of a framework or uh, recommendations. And then they've got, I mean, even just running for school board has rules. So um, there are things that you have to do in order to partner with DPI. And DPI does uh, house, and then as, as I'm, whether you like it or you don't like it or however you feel about it, there's financial gains and things that you have to look at when you're making decisions about whether you're going to use something or not going to use something. And so um, 
part of it is how much of our local economy can host certain choices um, that otherwise we wouldn't have funding to do. So it's a very complicated, complex uh, relationship, but it's a necessary one, and it's what allows us to, like I said, move kids into other spaces and be prepared. I have been a board member for almost 17 years and been a big um, support of kids are more than a test score. And I hear you talk about the success of kids um, outside and what our goals are. Can you talk a little bit about how we, how you define success as a student? Um, absolutely. So um, success is a sticky one. I, um, because I think it is kind of in the eye of the beholder, but I think that uh, in terms of basic uh, human need, I think there's a, a few things. I think being a lifelong learner will lead to success. I think being comfortable and able and loving and enjoying learning is huge. Um, does it need to come out of a book? Maybe not, maybe experiential learning, whether it be hunter safety classes or how gym appears in different forms throughout the day in different spaces. Um, um, those are all such huge key factors in defining who we are and our experience as people in the world. So, um, yeah, so when it comes to kiddos, I, I think a holistic approach is always very vital to their ongoing feelings of success around learning and their ability to carry that through their life. Um, whether you go to one of the local churches or you stop in a revolution, you're going to see that um, throughout life people are learning and being able to do that. Uh, well and whatnot is going to benefit and just make people feel more whole. So as far as the success of a kiddo goes, you got to start when they're little. And so I want them to love to come to school. I want them to have warm, happy, beautiful experiences. I want them to be able to figure out how to struggle through things and get there and and, and appreciate themselves through the process. I want to see, I mean, we've got such incredible teachers here. It's, it's just, it's moving. It's, it's quite profound. The teachers are, they show up every day. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do 32 kids, second graders all day long, and she loves it, and she's amazing at it, and so was the teacher before that, and the one before that. And so um, I think what better thing can we ask for and give our kids than those gifts to those people that care enough every day to show up and be there. So um, success, sticky one. Um, but I, I'd like to see all the kids have opportunities when they leave the doors, and I'd like to see them carry their learning and their love for it through their life. I actually have two questions. Rock. Let's one go. hard, one harder. Oh, good. Uh, which would you prefer? Whichever you'd like. All right. We'll start with the hard one. What would your plan be to tackle the truancy problem? It's funny you say that. So I was in Melman, um, the job that I'm currently doing uh, here. In, uh, we partner with them, and we're doing some some academic content in the Melman School District and the Melman Center. Um, and uh, I sat down, and it was, a, it was a, a topic of conversation throughout the meeting. It wasn't why I was there, but it was one we had. And uh, so I think the community aspect of is going to be hugely important to the truancy problem. I don't think that anything we've tried has worked. And I think, um, so I think one is asking why the kids aren't going to want to be there. And then two, figuring out ways that we can be creative and think outside the box. Um, and come up with different or new ways to try. Uh, I sat with Vicki Mikowski quite a bit, our school social worker, because we oftentimes will um, help with transportation and things of that nature. And um, I know it's something she's, I mean, she's so great. She pulls out this map and she's like, here's the route that we could take and we get everybody where they need to go. And so, I mean, there's people in the community that are thinking about it. They're trying, they're coming up with ideas, they're being, you know, collaborative, they're, um, if we could all get on the same page as a community and start looking at those things together rather than quarreling amongst each other about different perspectives, I think that would be a good start because I think it's going to take everyone. Fantastic. And during your answer, you made multiple segues into this harder question. As a new board member, if you are elected, what would be your dream that you would like to see actualized collaborating between the board the schools and the homes 
to meet the standards, fix the truancy problem, and maintain the positive trajectory that you mentioned when you first started speaking? Ten minutes. You have two minutes. Oh gosh. Um, okay. So I don't have the answers to that question, if I'm going to be really honest, uh, as I understand it. Um, I think that uh, I love to collaborate, so that'll help. But I think there's a lot of questions that need, need to be asked, and I think there's a ton that needs to be unpacked. So I think there's so it's so multifaceted, and there's so many different stakeholders that um, sitting in spaces with those individuals and really un, like exploring what the different aspects are and how uh, we can work together. I think that would be my first my first step. So I don't have other than maybe getting to a non-trans issue, which would be a, you know the big dream. Uh, but I'd start a little bit smaller. I'd say let's hear from everybody and see kind of where we're, we're landing, so that we can at least have an understanding going into creating a solution that's well informed. Did I answer it? Ish. Did I make it in time? <laughs> yes. We have two seconds left. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Okay. Nathan. Uh, my name is Nathan Babcock. Um, I graduated from Blackford Falls, lived in Blackford Falls my whole life. Uh, after high school, I was in the Army National Guard for six years. I have two kids in the district um, that worked locally at different places uh, over the last 15 years. And I guess for as far as an introduction, that's all I really know. Does anybody have any questions for Nathan? <clears throat> Oh, it's the, the standard and uh, do you think our kids at the end of each grade level that we should have expectations on what they should learn? And if we're not meeting that, what we should do? And I guess that's under the tie of local control. Yeah, I think we should have standards that the kids are expected to meet. And if they don't meet them, I think they should be, whether it's held back or one of the options now is to hire Sylvan as a tutoring program. That price getting put back on the parents is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I don't understand how kids are meeting some of the standards right now. Um, there was a post on Facebook the other day that a guy, person, his dependent, he was very proud of, had a 3.8 GPA. And when I looked at his report card that he posted online, the kid missed 40 days in a trimester and still had a 3.8. I don't understand how that's possible. How, how can you not be in the classroom and still meet the standards? Either the kid's a genius, which good for him, or I don't know, are they not getting taught anything while they're there that's relevant to passing and meeting the, the, the standards that we have set in place where we just push them through and pass them anyways? That's a lot of school to miss in a 60 day trimester. Okay, and another question. I asked Casey this. Um, what's your definition of a safe place? We hear that a lot when we're at board meetings. The kids have to have a safe place. They feel safe at school. Um, what's your definition of that? Uh, yeah, just an environment that, you know, they feel they can learn and they can excel. Um, you know, it's a tough, tough topic, but you know, get rid of the bullying and get rid of uh, the hazing if there is, and you know, have some discipline. I don't know what the discipline level is in the school now. Uh, I'm not super familiar with that, to be honest. But I think the kids need to be held accountable for their actions and make it a uh, more safe learning environment if there are those types of things going on, whether it's racism or bullying or picking on people about their gender or whatever the case may be. I think that we need to have a little bit more strict disciplinary action for those things. Mary Jo Radcliffe again. I heard, <clears throat> excuse me, I heard someone 
talk about the math curriculum that was chosen at a board meeting. Um, Nathan, who do you think um, should have more input in choosing a curriculum? The teachers that actually teach it or the school board? I think the teachers should have a lot of say in it, but ultimately at the end of the day, I think the school board needs to review it and approve it rather than just rubber stamp it and say, yep, this is what we're going with without ever looking at it. I think we have some very educated people on our board, um, and I think that the board should at least review what they're signing and, and approving. Anybody else out here? What makes you think that they did? They, they said they did. Were you at the November board meeting? That they didn't? We had one board member that went and looked at the meeting, went to look at the curriculum. One. One out of seven. One. And when they asked, when a couple of them asked for more time, they were. I think the question them. was for Nathan. Yeah, the, the November meeting is, and I talked to one of the board members and he told me that it was pushed through. What are your thoughts on the ELA adoption that recently happened? Did you get the same feedback on that one? Don't know what that is, to be honest English with you. language arts, there was just a new reading resource approved for elementary. Did you get the same feedback on that one? No. Okay, so just to be clear, every board member was given the exact same opportunity and those board members chose not to take it. And so they again relied on the expertise of the teachers that selected it because you can talk about math in November, but in March was English language arts for K, for third through fifth and um, an English curriculum and a new resource for high school social studies. So. It's interesting to me that math is being cherry picked out because there was an individual disappointed when we adopt curriculum resources all the time, all the time. And I got asked a question about the math one, so that's. That's why I was just asking if you knew about the other one. Okay. Having been on the school board, I know the time frame for reviewing things has typically been very short. And so when you get a whole pile of board materials on Thursday or Friday, and the board meeting is Monday, it's really hard to go through some of that. Would you be in favor of having the board members get the materials a little sooner? Yeah, I think that they need adequate time to review it. If, uh, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna read through the math curriculum and say, oh, I don't think this is right. You know, I'm gonna lean on people that, that understand it and know it and take their views into consideration but ultimately at the end of the day if the board is the ones approving it i think they should have it in their hands and have time to talk about it and, and amongst themselves do you think it would be a good idea to include the community on in some of those discussions if there were concerns before approving it i wouldn't be opposed to that either we have a lot of smart people in the community uh, whether it be business owners or wh whatever the case may be i think we should absolutely reach out to if you want to use experts in their field, if it's math, like maybe we have former math professors that we can reach out to and ask. Uh, hello, again, this is Chad Black here. Um, just from my own understanding, as I'm listening to you speak, um, what is the difference in your opinion, using your words, <laughs> between rubber stamping and leaning on the expertise of those who know the subject matter. When you yourself just said that you wouldn't read the math curriculum anyway, you'd rely on the experts. How is that different than rubber stamping? Well, I would read through it, and then the, the, the question from Patty was, if we had more time, would we reach out to people? Absolutely, I would, I would read through it and I would ask those people, you know, what do you think about this? What's your opinion? Um, but to have something in your hands two, three, four days ahead of time and then say, well, we want to review this and say there's no time, we just need to pass it, I, I think that's a little ridiculous. I just think there needs to be more time to review that stuff.
What's your plan to fix truancy? I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a black and white answer to fix it. Um, I think that's, again, going to have to be a, a really a community effort. I don't, I don't have the answer. I don't have the black and white answer for how we get kids to school. I absolutely agree with everybody that it has to be a place that they want to go to. Um, how we make that happen, I think the group would really just have to sit down and, and really brainstorm and get the community involved. Maybe the community has some ideas. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you sit down as a board and make the parents get the kids to school. I don't. Okay, so to continue our conversation using your language, what would your ideal situation be for the collaboration between board members, school faculty, and families to curb the truancy problem? What would my ideal situation be? How would you manufacture your ideal situation as a new board member? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to manufacture a relationship between the faculty and the families? Sounds like a good start. Could you please expand on that? Yeah, I, I just think that, like I said, I think the, the community and the staff and the board absolutely need to be involved and come up with a solution. I don't have the solution. And, and obviously, our past board hasn't either for years. And I don't know how to mend that. I think the board would have to sit down and get the community involved and, and reach out and say, hey, how do, we, how do we fix this? I don't know if you go back to writing citations to families. I don't think that really works because by the time it goes through the, the, the court system, the school year is already done. Okay, I have a quick question. What attributes and behaviors are essential for school board members? I think attributes and what was the other one? Behaviors? Behaviors, yep. Yeah, I think uh, just being responsible, holding yourself responsible, um, being out in the community active, um, you know, I, I've been on the uh, Black River Hockey uh, board for years, helped coach. Um, I feel like I have some good leadership qualities from the military. And uh, yeah, I think attributes is, is one big one to me would be having a backbone and being able to make tough decisions and standing up for what is right. Okay, and another one is, what differentiates you from the other candidates and or board members? Um, I guess what I would say differentiates me from the other board members, um, I don't know, it's kind of, I feel like I'm taking a stab at everybody because I don't know them all personally, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't be scared to voice my opinion when the tough decisions come. Um, you know, we've had the situations in the school district where, you know, we have a revolving door of administration, um, teachers. Um, I heard firsthand that a principal got his contract not offered for extension uh, because of test scores at a certain building. But then at the district level, we don't want to talk about test scores. And I would not be afraid to have that conversation and ask why. Okay, I have another one. How can the school board best communicate with its constituent groups? I think one good way would be, it was brought up in one of the other forums, like having an open house where the board was there the families could come in, the community could come in, um, see the facilities, and I think that would be a really good start. Okay, 
I think I've been thinking about for years is um, the value of driver's ed. And we used to always get it in school. We took it during the summer and the school always offered it. And in a rural community, if you're going to have a job, you have to be able to drive. Um, and I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about having uh, finding a way or funding to have that included somehow in the schools um, as a course you could do in school. I know sometimes it's after school, sometimes in the summer. Would you be in favor of the school supporting the driver's ed program? Yeah, I think absolutely. Um, that and the hunter safety one that came up earlier, I'd be more than willing to look into that and, and hear it out. And I would be on I would be on board and support both of those. Okay, we have just under a minute, so I think we'll move on. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, my name is Amy Blackdeer, and I'm one of the co-presidents of the Tiger Community Organization. Uh, I first want to say thank you to everyone for being here tonight and to Giovanna for coordinating this event. And I also want to thank our TCO members for coordinating the last forum and working diligently towards creating a community of members that care. Uh, we also appreciate the Ho-Chunk Nation for hosting uh, and providing a meal and are also thankful that you stand always ready, willing, and able to support the community at large. I am highly confident it would not be successful without you. I also want to say thank you to the Ho-Chunk Nation Department of Education for always standing with us and uh, striving for excellence in education. Uh, rather than me go on about when I moved here or why or how many years ago, I just wanted to kind of explain how I got to this point today. Uh, during COVID, I noticed an immediate and seemingly contentious shift in the climate of our community, one that I wasn't paying a ton of attention to before, but um, I always felt like surely there's work to be done. I am somebody that always likes to do better, get better, have better, and be better. So as a, a personal goal, I always am striving for growth and for finding better and different ways to do things. Um, I noticed, uh, at least in my humble opinion, that our community that maybe I still felt a bit of an outsider to having been new here um, seemed to crack open and then apart. And that's what first got my attention. And I always joke about the dueling yard signs because I think that they definitely caught my attention and hinted to and toward a problem that I didn't realize existed here. I thought it was a well-oiled machine and that I could easily um, retire from this kind of fun in my adult life after raising five adult children, one of which is almost 30 years old. I felt that I had done my due diligence and served on the board at Fountain of Life School in Tucson as well as served on the PTO and site council at Borman Elementary School. However, uh, when my daughter was a senior in high school, she received, I received a phone call, uh, and in that phone call she shared that she had received some literature that was placed on her vehicle without her permission, and I found this to be highly offensive as a parent. I felt like my daughter was violated to some degree. And when we talked about what was on that pamphlet, um, it was propaganda that was attacking our teachers, staff, and admin. Um, there's a quote that we kind of abide by in our family, whether we want to or not, you know, when you stay quiet in the face of evil or adversity, you're basically being complicit. So I quickly came out of retirement and I decided after attending my first board meeting, which was about the gender plan, um, my daughter was one of the students that helped write the gender plan and I wanted, even though she had by then graduated, I wanted to give her the support that she deserved as a human being and kind of see this through a little bit post-graduation. Uh, that first board meeting for me was extremely eye-opening and it inspired me to dig in and not quit until my work here is finished, even though I didn't want to get started in the first place. I feel like good people usually stand up when their names are called, and I was happy to do that. Um, 
Several months later, I attended a data walk put on by Michaela, where I quietly worked up the courage to bring up racism. And I was very nervous about how this would be received by the other attendees. Um, but I'm not scared either of anything, and I never have been. And that's kind of a fun fact about me. I'll approach and touch on and talk about hard issues and do the hard things. Feelings aside, I'm not a feeler, I'm a thinker, and I'm also a doer. So I brought it up. And I figured we'll let these chips fall where they may, but rather than spark disregard, um, it actually sparked a beautiful relationship between Michaela and I, two girls, not from here, two ladies who are ready to get things done um, and take the experience we have outside of these four walls of Black River and put it to good use. Um, and in the past year and a half, we have faced and addressed and combated many efforts to tear down our students, teachers, and staff. Um, and we will stay ready and continue to do so. I'm positive that by voting for us, we can maybe potentially have a shift in perspective here uh, by sending a resounding no to everyone that stands in our way. I'd be happy to take questions. Yes? Um, you mentioned racism that's been uh, strong in our committee yes. for a long time. So how would you cure racism? Oh, I can't cure racism. I think that's kind of a silly concept, I suppose, unless um, I was magical, which I'm not, but I'd like to think I have a bit of magic to me. I would say the first thing that we could do to cure racism, as you term it, where I would say maybe just start to heal some of the racism in Black River Falls, I would say uh, our first uh, best bet would be to vote people onto the board who aren't racist. Thank you for your question. But how, what would you bring to the board? What would you bring to the district to help solve this issue or help to make an attempt to solve this issue? I think people that grow up in rural communities are great and amazing and wonderful people and I've enjoyed cohabitating with you all and I admire all of you and your backgrounds and your unique life circumstances and experiences, but there's something to be said for people who have lived their entire lives with and around diversity, people of different races, ethnicities, religions, backgrounds, experiences, and I think there's a lot to be said for having an open mind that I have not entirely seen here amidst and amongst this community wholeheartedly. Okay, and then I'll mention truancy before Chad does. Um, I've had some parents come up to me, and their child is chronic truant. Um, and every time they get an email from the school district, they've reached out to the school district, and there's been no return phone calls. And finally, after um, being kind of annoying to a certain school here for the principal, they finally got a return phone call. And it turned out that our school district offers a lot of alternative education for kids. It can customize kids. And this parent did not even know that. And so as a school board member, would you make it known to families that there is other ways to get education on, to your kids than just sending them to school? There's other programs that our district has. There's a lot to unpack there. I guess my first concern would be why people in the community are approaching you for anything considering you don't have children in the district but seeing they did you said that this parent reached out multiple times to the board or the teachers or staff and did not receive a phone call back and then you followed that up with that they did receive a phone call back and i would add on to that by saying as a parent in the district for 10 years i have never one time not had my voice heard i've never not had a return phone call I've never had an issue that wasn't resolved, so I have to maybe wonder why Okay, but why there are parents be. out there that do not get return phone calls. So what I'm asking is, how, as a board member, would you make sure communication is being dealt with just not a certain few, but with everybody? Sure. Who is the phone call put into? Teacher, staff, or administration? Ad admin. Admin. How would I, as a board member, ensure that administrative staff returns phone calls? Yeah, because you're... And the board member, board members are in charge of the whole district. Correct. Okay, so so I'm asking you, basically, how would you communicate better to parents if they're returning phone calls, or if even if they're not answering emails? How would how would the district how follow through? How would I through? encourage admin as a board member to return phone calls? I'd probably say, people are pretty angry. We better return those phone calls. 
Any other questions? Patty? Hi, Amy. I've heard you speak at other um, meetings and the successes that your children have had, which is terrific and I think a testament to your parenting. But uh, obviously there's a whole group of people, the majority of our students have not had those successes. And there are individuals in the community that have finally brought forth that uh, information that our students were academically not doing as well. And those people were ostracized, marginalized, excluded from board committees, and not listened to. So I'm wondering how you would go forward and heal those uh, divisions that have occurred. It's not the fault of people bringing forth the, the correct information that are at fault. What was the question? The question is how would you heal that and how would you listen to people who have genuine and true concerns about the I think I've spent you? the ent entire last year and a half listening to those people and hearing their cries and hearing their complaints and hearing their worries I have a very open mind. I've listened. I've honored what you and others have had to say. I've used an open mind in considering everything you've had to say. And of course, it would be silly to say that every child here is successful. I'm a wife of a social worker. I know that that is very much a fantasy world where each and every child is successful here. But I think that um, children's success is related back to the home and not put on the teachers. If my child does something and fails at something or has a problem with something, then I look at myself and my child as to how we can fix that because I find it to be my wholehearted responsibility as a parent to ensure that my kids are successful. So if other parents in the district haven't been successful, I would ask them what have they not done as parents to ensure that because I stop at nothing to make sure my children are successful, and it's up to every parent to make sure that their child is successful. If we were all doing that, you would take that collective and our DPI report card would be off the chain, like we'd be doing super, super great. But I agree. unfortunately, we can't be in everyone's homes and I can't help everybody with their homework every night. I can only worry about myself and my family. And like you said, we're pretty darn successful, but I think that for those that aren't, we can't continue to blame the teachers or attack our teachers or attack our staff and think that that's going to solve anything because I can tell you right now it's not going to. Did you have any other questions? Yes, I, okay. I'm wondering, <clears throat> again, it's not attacking teachers or staff to say that the students aren't achieving. It's obviously the parents. The board has the statutory responsibility to ensure the academic education of students. How can the school board do that in a better way? How can they engage the parents? How would you help to uh, cross those divisions? Sure, I think at the last forum I said our teachers can't teach harder or more. They have X amount of hours per day. They're here every day. They're teaching every day. Uh, Betsy said something to the effect of the standards that these kids need to learn, but it isn't necessarily the standards, I mean, yes to no, they have to learn. The standards have to be presented but the better question is like, are our teachers teaching the standards? Yes, they are. It's up to the children and the families as to whether or not the child is learning. I don't think that burden should be placed on the teachers. I, I would agree again. It's a, it's a communication issue, I would think. And I have one last question. Do you think it's yes. negative and divisive to acknowledge that there are academic problems in our schools? Can you say that one more time? Do you think it is negative and divisive to acknowledge and that there are academic uh, problems in our schools? It was interesting. I was at a meeting with politicians over the weekend, actually, the party, and they were talking about this issue. And he said, why isn't your community up in arms that their students aren't learning? And so I thought that was an two interesting minutes. comment. We have two minutes. Yeah, I think that there are kids in our community learning and Everyone always fixates on me saying like, oh, well, that's just one example of successful students here, but I honestly don't know a single family here that hasn't been successful. I personally don't know anybody that's wheeling down the hallway and throwing shoes at each other besides the one example we've been giving. Everyone else's kids are buckling down and doing what they need to be doing. I, I, it, there's not a problem with saying that we have a problem. Some kids aren't doing well, but again, that, as Michaela knows and Janessa and my husband, Chad, who's been very vocal this evening in social work, all of these people 
work with families, it's not the school's fault that these children aren't doing well. And there's no problem in saying they're not doing well, but that doesn't mean we're all doing poorly. And that also needs to be focused on and identified and looked at and received instead of just focusing on the negative all of the time. Thank you. We have a couple seconds left. I'm good. Okay. You are the last candidate. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rebecca Franks. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, this is our fourth forum, like everyone has said. Um, I'm a mom of three boys, 23, 21, and 18. Um, I have a son that just graduated um, with CBDC for trucking school. The other one is going to mechanical design engineer at Western Tech. I'm going to be going on to Viterbo for more civil engineering. And my third one will be graduating and going to get his HESD on uh, this fall. So my kids are growing and um, I'm ready for school board because I want to pursue better education and achievement for the kids and students. I want money for parental rights so that they can get involved with their kids' education and also protecting the children from bullying. Um, drugs and violence. Um, those are my three passions of why I want to be on the school board. Um, I know it's been said many times, our score is 396 out of 424, and my goal on being on the school board is being a board that we can talk back and forth and get this accomplished so the kids can get back to learning. And even if we reach out to other districts, whether it's um, Alma Center, was at 296, um, Doro, I believe that's 105, 108, somewhere in there. Um, or no, 205, and West Salem is 105. But anyway, just reaching out to other districts, see what they're doing, and then bring it back to the board so that we all can learn from the other districts and try to get our students up to par. I'll open it up for questions. Mary Jo Radcliffe, um, you said you're running for parental rights. I'm wondering, can you expand on that? What rights you think parents perhaps don't have now that you'd like to see? Um, for parental rights, um, I know there was a thing at one of the forums, one of the first ones about practice versus homework. And I think the kids should do homework and the parents should be involved more in that. Um, some of the people have reached out to me and say um, they don't bring homework home and so they don't know how to students are doing. So I, I would like the parents to be able to see that homework and, and be more involved and be more transparent between the board and the teachers and everybody to be more of a communication. So that's what I mean by parental rights. So, but the parents do have the, you you haven't heard that the parents don't have the right to no, talk to no. the teacher, you're just. Right. right, I'm just saying that I want the parents involved in the school to try to get their scores up. So more parent activism in yeah. school. Okay. Um, for academics, again, um, the board votes to approve standards. Um, we're hurting, especially in the elementary, it seems like, and we really can't blame COVID anymore because our school district, they implemented a lot of COVID rules. Um, so how would you fix, I guess, per se, as a board member, especially our elementary, how would we get our kids up to par? I mean, we have a majority of elementary kids that are not doing well. So my goal on being on the school board is to put in touring, and I see the school board just was electing Sylvania Learning Center to do tutoring, but I think the parents have to pay for that. I think that we should check into our budget better. I also forgot, at the last one, I forgot this one, I graduated from UW Eau Claire with a business management comprehensive major. So I wanna check the finances out and see what the kids, the students, and how much is going for their teaching, how much is going for different stuff. And so if we have money left over that we can tutor the kids within the school, within the school hours, 
um, maybe bringing volunteers to do that. I know I've seen people, um, I think it was on Second Parade Facebook page, where tutors are coming in. So I know they're working with it, but I think we just need to push them a little bit more. Um, I know a lot of kids have IEPs when I've been going to board meetings. They've been talking about that. So every kid has their own problems at home, and the teachers have to deal with it. But we all as a community have to come together and help students learn. Think there's any room in school while they're failing? Do you think there's any room in school for pushing political agendas and politics? Like the board last year spent like six months it was on agenda every month pushing gender stuff, and I know they push this climate change scaring the kids to death, depressing them right from grade one. They tell them by the time you graduate, the world's gonna end. Do you believe there's any? excuse for a board member to support any political agendas or should they devote their time to education i believe they should be educating the students during that time um, the parents should have discussion at their home for the political agendas that go on so i believe that the teacher should be teaching the basics math reading writing during all that time Hello. Um, I fancy myself a fairly educated guy, and I'm confused by your last statement. Um, as a holder of a master's degree in education, I'm really confused. Did you just say that a school's education, I'm doing air quotes in case you can't see, yeah. should focus just on reading, writing, and arithmetic? Well, I'm saying that's the basics to get their standards up, is that. So just reading, no, writing, and arithmetic. No, you have history, you have, I'm just saying that's what I grew up with. That's the basics was reading, writing, and arithmetic. There's history, there's So no science. social, emotional growth, no developmental stages, no behavioral health, no nothing, just reading, writing, and arithmetic. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you, if the kids IEP or whatever, if they have to, we have to deal with that in the school, then we have to deal with that on the student. But I don't think it should be just shoved down everybody's throat. Shoving what down people's throats? Other political agendas. How is emotional health in an elementary school student, a political agenda. That isn't. That's why I said you still have to go with the IEPs and different stuff. But there's that's different. That's health, and the doctors and them should be teaching, going with the teachers, and doing that. Can you speak into the mic so I can hear you? I said that is up to the teachers and the doctors and stuff to go through on each specific student, that's what IEPs and those are for. So you're aware that IEPs can be given for both academic performance and behavioral issues? Yes. Okay. But behavioral issues don't have a place in your form of education. So we would do away with half of the IEPs? No, I'm just saying we have to communicate between the doctors and the parents and the staff together to do that. But it shouldn't be forced on everybody in the class, okay, you all have to get IEPs or that. It has to come through what the teachers are going to tell them. Okay, if kids, if kids are coming from homes that aren't the greatest and stuff, does the school have to teach them to be respectful? Yes, the school should teach Does the school have to teach them to walk in the walk in the hallways? If they're coming from a home that doesn't teach them this. 
Yeah, I would say they would have to teach that if they don't know it already. Okay, so do you think teachers have expectations on how their class should be managed and how kids should be behaved? Yes. Okay, do you think the school should have consequences when kids do not behave? Yeah, there should be some kind of consequence. Okay, okay. Mary Jo Rasmaski again. I've talked before about kids are more than a test score, and I will again say our son had dyslexia and was probably the lowest test score ever, but was highly successful from hands-on learning and opportunities that he was given um, in our school as well as the community. And before his death at age 23, he was on his way to become an engineer. And again, kids are more than a test score, hands-on learning, and the apprenticeship at DNS Manufacturing. Can you talk about an alternative um, to, to that and if you would support the hands-on learning and not just concentrate on test scores? Yeah, I believe that um, we already have it. There's trade schools like welding and different stuff like that that should be going on in the school. Um, that's how the kids grow is to experience the different stuff. So I agree that it's not just numbers in the test scores, but we still have to grade them by something to know if they're learning or not. And I know some pe people can't. I know one of the board meetings we had on the ACT um, testing, I think we were going over those results. And um, some of the students with IEPs, they get a longer time to do the ACT. And I agree with that totally. Whatever they have physically, mentally going on, we have to um, go with that and try to get the kids, you know, through their ACT or whatever, whatever their mental state is. Go ahead. Amy? Sure. How do you expect families in Black River Falls to support your oh, campaign your like and potential election? when you yourself did not utilize public education for your own children? And the second part of that question is, why did you choose not to use public education, but you feel so passionately about our children's public education? What was the first question? No, you're okay. Um, how do you expect families in Black River Falls to support your campaign and potential election to the board when you yourself or your own family did not choose public education. Um, my husband and I discussed this back when we had our children and we decided to um, homeschool our kids just because it was the best fit for us. And to be, I think the second part is why I chose to run for the school board is because I feel like I had a passion for my kids and I wanna instill that and help communicate that to the other kids. I got a question here. I'm in the public. Yeah. This is a public forum, and it's for you guys. I'm also. A parent. This isn't a debate between board members, is it, or is it? I'm also a parent, so this is a question as a parent. You are running for board. Is it a okay, public forum? Okay, can you just ask your question for... then, if you have a question, please? Yeah, I have a question. I want to get a question in here instead of the people up there. Okay. Okay. I, I grew up. I graduated in '73. Back then, the kids could read and write, do their work. They go get a job. I work with a guy that's uh, graduated uh, 15 years ago from the public school. He can't do math, he can't read, or he's sad. Back in the olden days, everybody could read or write. Is, would there be anything wrong with going back to the way it was? Because uh, it worked back then. They had basics. They taught reading, writing, and arithmetic. They also taught history, they taught a lot of classes. But they didn't waste their time on political issues, which you claim uh, you claim nothing's wrong with the schools there, Amy. Nothing's wrong with schools. Everything's great. And if okay, it isn't, she have I'll ask you a question, question too. I asked her a question. I'll ask you a question. Is there the, anything you know, you'll fix in the schools? Yeah, I would. I would definitely approach my job as a school board member by caring about children and families and understanding that I would apply the philosophies I use as a parent to my role on the board. And you can look at it, we're pretty divided up here. 
And if you were liken, if you were going to liken it to parenting, I would say we have three authoritarians, and we have three people who would be on the board in a more authoritative manner. Which, if you are well versed in child education, you would understand and know that you will be far more effective as a parent and thus as a board member by taking an authoritative position. I, for example, wouldn't bring up a question about fornicating sheep at a forum where children were present. So I would ask you if you felt that that was appropriate at our last forum. I thought that was profoundly disgusting. And for her to even let you ask that and not be the least bit embarrassed would bring into question her ability to lead other people's children. I don't know what the question exactly was that was being asked, but let's go back to Rebecca. The question was, would Amy fix anything in the schools or everything just stays away? The question is for Amy. We're on Rebecca now, so yeah. let's let her talk. Well, we're having board members up there debate, so I expect their side of the table to make a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question, Betsy? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, um, for Becky. Have there been any board members in Black River Falls serving on the Black River Falls School District that have either homeschooled their kids or not have kids in the district? Yes, a lot of kids have that. Thank you. So it doesn't matter. I mean, we're all parents, we're all stockholders, so we should have a voice. There's a lot of virtual kids that have their kids not in the district. And I think I would bring a diverse um, background of what I've learned homeschooling so the board would know what's going on, maybe bring some of the kids back into the district. I got a couple questions. Becky, did we pay property taxes to pay for the public schools? Even okay, we enough. Paid for our enough. Own schools? We're not going to get into your property taxes now. Thank you. Okay, I have one more question. Okay, so what particular experiences or skills have prepared you to serve as a board member if elected? Um, what skills? Um, well, it's brought up that I homeschooled my kids, so I have taught for 12 years um, at home with a curriculum, and I know what is out there. Um, so um, that's what I would bring. And I also have been attending school board meetings. I wish some of the other board members have attended. I've attended for the last six months, and then there was a time a year or two ago I attended for six, eight months. Um, so, I like to hear what's going on and what job I'm getting into before I actually do it. So that's why I've been attending to hear what's been going on. Okay. Thank you. And with that, you have 31 seconds. Thank you all for coming, and I want to thank the whole chunk for having us here. I think this is a great venue, and um, I look forward to collaborating with them and uh, getting to know all the whole chunk better. Thank you for coming today. Well, thanks everyone for attending. Um, thank you, Ben, and every your help. Aaron. 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 Ben and Aaron. Okay. And um, don't forget to vote April second. Have a good evening. Drive safe.